Greetings and blessings to all of you on this sixth weekend of Lent. You know, we're almost to the end, and I hope you've had a great Lent filled with many graces. I want to thank you for joining me on this journey through our mission values over these past six weeks. And I hope that these reflections have been helpful in some way and that the Lord has somehow stirred up your hearts and has led you to a deeper life in him. You know, last week we took a time and reflected upon what it means to be docile to the Holy Spirit. And so for this last week, we want to reflect upon our sixth mission value, which is the absolute primacy of prayer for all we do. You know, I think the greatest example for this mission value, the absolute primacy of prayer was Jesus himself. You know, for Jesus, Prayer was a way of life, an absolute necessity. It was a means of communication with the Father and the means of bringing the power of God the Father into his humanity moment by moment. More than once, Jesus told the Jews and his disciples that he does only what the Father tells him. You know, for example, in John's Gospel, chapter 14, he said, you know, the world must know that I love the Father and that I do just as the Father has commanded me. And in chapter 8, he said, when, when you lift up the Son of Man, then you will realize that I am and that I do nothing on my own, but I say only what the Father taught me. So it was in the communion with the Father in prayer that brought clarity to Jesus you know, regarding his life and mission. So friends, if that's the case, why would it be any different for each of us? I don't know about you, but when I was growing up, I don't recall anyone ever teaching me how to pray. You might think that's odd, but hear me out. I was taught how to say prayers, right? I memorize all the prayers, Our Father, Hail Mary, Glory Be, the Apostles' Creed, and you know, many others but never was taught how to really pray. In other words, how to seek this union with the Lord as Jesus sought union with the Father. I was taught prayers more or less kind of as an exercise, so to speak, so not, as a, not as an encounter. Prayer was something that I said. Now, there's so much to, more that could be said about the importance of prayer and how it impacts our call to discipleship more than can be said here. But daily, a daily prayer life is, is more than just asking God to fulfill our needs or grant our wants and desires. Our all-giving and merciful God wants to do this, but if we only go to the Lord when we want something, I don't know, that seems to be a relationship of usury instead of a relationship of love. In fact, the Catechism of the Catholic Church asks this question, what is the image of God that motivates our prayer? An instrument to be used or the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ? Interesting question. Prayer is better understood as a conversation with the Father who loves us. But conversations also require listening, don't they? The heart of any deep relationship is sharing what's most personal and intimate with the one who loves us. The sharing of our hearts with the one we love and the one who loves us. You know, vocal prayer, intercessory prayer and the like are noble and important forms of prayer, but the prayer of listening is too often neglected. So prayer is not just telling God what we want. It's discovering what he desires of us. And it requires that we sit humbly and listen. Remember last week and being docile to the Holy Spirit? In the words of St. Mother, Mother Teresa, she said, God has created us to love and to be loved. And this is the beginning of prayer. To know that he loves us, that we've been created for greater things. You know, Mother Teresa, she's always been a great encouragement to me in my own prayer life. So in, in speaking of the importance of prayer, she said, you know, prayer makes the heart grow bigger until it's capable of containing the gift of God himself. 
Don't we all want that to contain the gift of God himself? You know, her whole life, um, her whole ministry, all the great things that she was able to accomplish, it was because of her daily prayer life, the daily holy hour. In her own words, she says, the secret is simple. The secret is simple for her life. The secret is simple. She said, I pray. So think of all that she did with her life. Her secret. My secret is simple. I pray. When we look at the lives of Jesus' disciples who had been sent on mission, they didn't pray only before doing something. They prayed in order to know what to do. And so like Jesus, as they sought out what to do, their daily prayer brought clarity to their mission. In other words, you know, God's plan for our lives must be carefully discerned. And this happens through our prayer and reflection where prayer really is the primacy for all that we do. Prayer is the foundation for effective life and service for Jesus Christ. For it is in communion with him that we not only find the energy to give our lives away for his mission, but to reach our final destination as well. So allow me again to end with the words of St. Mother Teresa. She said, you know, the fruit of prayer is faith. You know, faith is both one of the gifts and one of the fruits of the Holy Spirit. And faith arises and increases as we open to God in prayer, open our hearts to God in prayer. I mean, the truth is, little prayer, little faith, much prayer, much faith. She went on to say, the fruit of faith is love, and the fruit of love is service. And the fruit of service is peace. Isn't that what we all want? Peace in our lives. So as we come to the end of this season of Lent, I would suggest these things. First, ask the Lord to teach you to pray. You know, it's precisely what the disciples asked Jesus. Lord, teach us to pray. And he will teach you in the way that he desires you to pray in order to foster this deeper union with him. And secondly, because a committed life of prayer is difficult for many of us, ask the Lord to deepen your desire for daily prayer, this daily communion with the Lord. In order to be a true disciple of Jesus, daily prayer, that daily encounter with the Lord is absolutely essential. And the third thing, Jesus will not and cannot be the Lord of our life without the primacy of prayer in our life. So spend time weekly with Jesus in Eucharistic adoration. And again, pray with the grace of surrender. So as we come to the conclusion of these weeks, I want to thank all of you who have been joining me over these past six weeks as we reflect upon these mission values. Remember that these mission values are meant to help bring clarity to how you and I are to behave as disciples and as a church so that we can more effectively mobilize to achieve the church's mission, which is what? Proclaiming the living gospel so that Christ Jesus may lead people to salvation through his healing, love, and mercy. My dear friends, have a blessed Holy Week.